I'm Tim Gresham from Temple Healthcare. This is another instructional video for the Centec Transcutaneous CO2 and O2 monitor. In this video, we're going to show you how to put the probe on a patient, make a measurement for as long as you desire, and then take the probe off the patient. Before we start, we need to check the machine. Uh, now let's have a look at this machine. Uh, it's, uh, it's just calibrated, so it's ready for use at the moment. Um, it has uh, a valid membrane, then membrane change due in 32.3 days, so that's fine. We have an available monitoring time of six hours. It's only six hours at the moment because it's only just calibrated. If you, we were to leave this to stabilize for some time, um, then you'll find that to go up to eight hours and then 12 hours, as long as the uh, calibration interval and the site time allows it. Um, we've also got a recommended sensor stabilization time there of 42 minutes. After the 42 minutes, we will have a, um, an increased available monitoring time. If we just wake it up a little bit, wake up the screen a little bit, I'm going to press the silence alarm button, which brings up the status bar at the bottom. Uh, we can see that on this machine, we have 55% uh, battery life. I have been using it for some other demos, so it's depleted a little bit. It's giving us the barometric pressure. Uh, one of the features of this machine is that it actually measures barometric pressure rather than uh, making a, a guess at it for your specific lab. Um, so that's nice. It's one of the fudge factors taken out of the calculation. Uh, it's also giving us eight, uh, uh, six, six hours of monitoring time. We've got a probe temperature set to 42 degrees and we've got a 100% calibration guess. So this, uh, this machine is all 100% uh, all ready to go. You can also check the uh, uh, the profile that the machine is set to. This one's set to a basic uh, with demonstration mode attached um, or activated. And uh, obviously you'll, you may have your own, um, your own profile. Incidentally, if someone's changed the profile um, on the device or changed a setting on the device that's not in, in, in keeping with the profile, uh, you will have another screen when you start it up that's, that says, do you want to continue with the changed um, setting or do you want to go back to the, uh, to the profile that it's set to? Um, and uh, so this one's, uh, this one's fully set up. We've got membranes, we've got monitoring time, and it's, uh, it's now ready to put on a patient. Um, if a calibration is required or the membrane change was required, then it would say so in the, uh, in the status bar, uh, but this one's fine. Okay, so now that it's ready to put on a, on a, uh, on a patient, there's a couple of things we need. Uh, we need some uh, multi-site attachment rings. These are the standard micropore attachment rings. Um, you can also get uh, hydrogel attachment rings. So if you have uh, patients that, are, um, that have particularly delicate tissue paper like skin, elderly or, or very young um, neonates, then the, uh, uh, the, mi the hydrogel ones are very good. Uh, normally we just use the standard um, micropore attachment rings though. We can also use the ear clips. Now the ear clips are, uh, are very useful for a very, very solid signal. Um, they've got uh, a sticky pad on either side uh, there's almost no uh, spring in them at all, um, and that's, uh, that's very important for, so that we don't actually occlude any blood flow in the, in the, ear cl in the earlobe. Uh, but these are just, you just uh, literally pull off the sticky, uh, you stick it down, uh, contact gel and the probe, um, and people use these routinely for exercise tests or uh, sort of difficult um, sleep studies where people are, are moving around a lot in the bed. Um, so there's a number of options there. Um, we need some alcohol wipes and we need contact gel. So let's get to it, shall we? Uh, we need to, this is, this is Ashton over here. Um, Ashton's very sick child, cough Ash. <coughs> See, very sick. Okay, so we're going to now uh, just prep the skin. Now in terms of probe placement, um, one of the best places to put the probe is on the forehead. It is a, um, the, the SATS technology is based on reflectance. Um, so it needs to actually, the, the signal needs to go in, bounce off and come back. Now that's not necessary for the CO2. So if you just want a CO2 signal anywhere on the trunk is good. We don't use a periphery because the response time is a little, little slower. Um, but if you want this, a really good and solid set signal, then put it against the bone. So that would be uh, forehead, high on the cheekbone is also good up here. Um, Clavicle is, uh, is useful, um, but as I said, if you don't want the, uh, the sats, if you're not, not that interested in the sats, then pretty much anywhere on the torso is fine. And even on the back, if you need to roll the baby over and put it on its back, then that's no problem either. Just to prep the skin, we're going to get our alcohol wipe and we're going to just rub any oils or makeup or whatever. Ash doesn't wear makeup, but um, some people do. 
uh, that we need to there. Put that to one side. Micropore doesn't like to stick to wet alcohol, um, so we either leave it to dry or give it a dab off. And then we grab our attachment ring, peel it off, and we stick it just above the eyebrow. Well, that's where I like to put it. And, and tap it all the way down so that it's nicely there. Okay, now, your patients will probably be lying down at this point, so I'm going to get Ash to put his head in this position where the attachment ring is more or less horizontal. I'm going to then put a one drop of contact gel, just one. Um, previous technologies have asked for two, um, but with this, if you put two drops of contact gel, it just um, comes out the side and makes a horrible mess, so we don't do that. We get, grab our probe out of the docking station, we just lift it out. The machine is ready to use. Close the docking station door. And we're literally go, just going to slide that in front ways and clip it in. So slide it in front ways and give it a good push. Spread the contact gel around. Ash, you can put your head up now. That's fine. And we're going to run that down just behind his ear. You'll notice that this can actually go any way you like it to go. It's on a swivel. It doesn't, get, it doesn't screw in. And then when we adjust this, and we're just going to put it on Ashton's lapel there, so he's nice and happy. Okay. Now we'll see back at the screen. If I can move this forward a little bit. We've got a SAT signal straight away. Uh, we've got a pulse rate signal straight away, but I'm not sure whether the camera can actually pick up. There's a grey number there that's rising. It says 18.5, it's actually 19.4, 9.9, 20. It's going up. Now that's that's the CO2 signal. Um, that's actually it's stabilizing on his skin. The concentrations are stabilizing. Um, so once that does stable, it's looking for a mathematical plateau. Uh, once it finds that plateau, then that's his CO2 reading, and it's going to stay there. Um, so uh, let's uh, give it a little bit of time to do that. Incidentally, if you're using these with um, polysomno polysomnography machines, um, what you'll notice is that that gray number isn't actually transmitted uh, out of the back of the machine. Uh, out of the um, uh, the DC port. So um, so when you go back to look at your uh, PSG signals to verify the signals, you'll find there's no signal yet. Once this turns bright green, and it will shortly, um, then you'll find the signal will go straight through to your polysomnography machine and you'll be able to verify that. Okay, so now we've got a close-up of the screen um, and we can see the gray number, I think, on the video, so that's fine. Um, and uh, it's at 41.9 right now, and it looks like it's going to plateau and turn green any second now because it really hasn't changed for a little while. Um, it's gone to 42. So let's see how long it takes to plateau. So now it looks like we've, uh, we've plateaued quite nicely at 41.7. Um, that's going to change bits and pieces. It's not going to stay exactly there, uh, but hopefully... Uh, Ash's um, CO2 measurements are um, more or less stable and he's not going to move too much. Uh, we can see we've got a nice um, a trend for the, for the sats. Uh, we've got a good press wave. Um, and we've just started now to get a, uh, a good trend for the CO2. Uh, now, if you have a look at this, you can see that the, um, this is about, this is 15 minutes, the, the trend range there. Uh, the trend ranges are variable. You can set that up with the profiles. Uh, you can also set up the amplitude of the trends as well. But if we have a, a quick look through the screens there now while we're looking at that, um, we can actually put the pulse rate on a trend as well. Go to the next one. We've got uh, the, uh, the screen that all the intensive care units love to use, um, and that's the, uh, the big numbers. Uh, this is also very useful if you're verifying the interface with a PSG machine, and you want to catch the numbers on, on the camera and look at it from your control room. Uh, incidentally, you can see the, uh, the 1.6 um, perfusion index there. Um, this is a, uh, uh, really just a signal quality, um, and it's very useful if that's well and truly over 1. Um, but generally, I've seen him go down to 0.5 before it ca starts to cause a problem with the signal quality. Um, we go next one. This is what we call the baseline screen. If I hit the, um, the Enter button once, and it says up the top, the number 1 option there is Set Baseline, I can push that again, and now we can see that there's a vertical white line on the screen at the point in time where I press the baseline button. Um, and uh, the baseline is then set. The baseline, we, we've actually set it into what the baseline was, 
And you can see now the beginnings of this, because this is moving quite quickly, there's a, a horizontal white line on the screen as well, um, which is going to stay at where we set the baseline. We can also see some stats. Delta, base, uh, delta B is the, um, is the change since we press, press the baseline button, and that operates on the SATS channel as well, Delta B. Um, and we've got a Delta 10, which is a change since 10 minutes ago. And obviously, it hasn't been 10 minutes since I pressed the baseline button. Um, so it's, uh, it's just a dash there now, and it's going to be a dash on the SATS channel also. Uh, now, the baseline button is very, very useful if you're changing CPAP settings or if you're changing ventilator settings or if you've administered a drug that, uh, that should have an, an, in, an impact on the SATs or the CO2. Um, and you can see how, um, what's changed and how you've improved the patient situation. So let's move to the next one. This is a large screen for the CO2, a large sense screen for the CO2, and we can well and truly see the baseline mix. Okay, and we can go back to the original one that we had. Uh, now, just to remind you, the baseline is easily set by pressing the Enter button twice. Uh, once accesses the Quick Access menu, and the second time um, will set the baseline. And we've got a nice steady signal at 42.3 for Ash, which would suggest that he's healthier than he thinks he is. So now uh, Ash has um, had his stay in his ICU bed, or he's done his uh, polyson polysomnography study. Um, we know his levels, um, and uh, oh, he may have even just been checked in, a, uh, in, a, in an emergency ward uh, to see what his CO2 is, um, and uh, he needs to come off. But before we do that, uh, we're going to uh, show you a quick little feature of this device. Um, Ash, let's say Ash is a, uh, a sleep patient, and he's in a sleep lab, and uh, he's been set up for the night, but uh, being young, as young people do, he wants to go to the toilet before he goes to sleep. So... Uh, now, what we do, all we do, is we unplug him, okay, and then Ash can take the probe, the probe, uh, the attachment, and everything with him to the toilet, um, and when he comes back, we then just put this back on. So we put that attachment back in there. Okay, now because we've had to cut, obviously, the power to the probe, it wants to restabilize, um, but ultimately, it'll just pick up where it left off. Um, incidentally, you have 30 minutes once that's unplugged to get it plugged back in uh, before the dis machine decides it needs to recalibrate. Um, and if the probe actually comes off the patient during the night sometime, uh, then you've got five minutes to get it back on. Okay, so it's 30 if it's unplugged, five if it's come off the patient. So now we're ready to take the probe off the patient. And we're going to just unclip it from his clothing and take it out from, the, from behind his ear. If you've used any micro pore to stick it down to the side of his face, obviously you'll need to take that off as well. I'm just going to swivel the probe around, put my finger on the tab. It doesn't have to be on the tab anywhere on the micro pore will be fine. And we're just going to ride that up on my finger and it's going to pop out. First thing we do is have a tissue at the ready. And we make sure that we wipe any of the old contact gel off. Um, that's very important because if we put the probe in the docking station with contact gel on it, um, the docking station can get uh, rather um, occluded and you'll find it'll go crystalline and there'll be crystals on the, um, on the seal. It won't be able to make a seal and we'll get a, an error message that says leak in docking station, gas leak in DS. Um, uh, which is the subject of another, another video uh, that you can look up. But there we go, we've got it nice and clean. We can then get an alcohol wipe and make sure we give the probe a really good, a really good wipe with alcohol. The probe is very alcohol resistant. The membrane is alcohol resistant as well, uh, which we find is very, very, uh, very handy for the infection control people. They're happy for you to use the membrane. Um, for the for its entire life rather than changing it between patients. So that's good. Um, we'll also give the cable a good wipe as well, all the way down. We'll retrieve that and um, we should be set. And now the next thing to show you is how to put the probe back in the docking station. Remember the docking station, the probe hangs up in the door. We make sure we can see the light. Um, 
The probe will go the other way around, but it doesn't fit very nicely. And you'll find if you try and close it, it won't close properly. So we make sure that the probe seats, sits nicely. The membrane is protected in that it's out and the membrane goes directly into the docking station there and it snaps shut with its magnetic catch. And you'll find it'll go straight into a calibration, the machine, because that's what it needs to do after it's been on a patient or out of a docking station for more than five minutes. So um, we've taken care of the machine, but don't neglect the patient. Well, to take the attachment ring off, we're going to pull the skin just a little bit tight and pull it off. And then we're going to wipe any excess contact gel away. And our ashes are all ready to go. So I hope you found that informative and valuable. You can find more information on our Centec transcutaneous CO2 and O2 monitor at our website on www.templehealthcare.com au and you can see other products as well and don't hesitate to give us a call on 02 4858 0690